church. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath, church. We're going to begin with some worship. So if you'd stand to your feet, um, we'd just love to sing together. And we're going to start by celebrating the, um, the freedom we have in, in Jesus. We're going to sing Freedom is Coming. So let's stand and, and sing. Promised land waiting for me. Sometimes there's an ocean that lies in between. I'll keep on traveling the path where you be till I'm right where you want me. That's where I will be. Freedom is coming and it has a name. Oh, no room for my change. You take me away. Freedom is coming, and it has a name. And it is Jesus. How sweet is the name? You said it's for freedom that. I was set free, now I walk in the victory that you won from me. If on the journey there are walls that remain, I'll sing in the promise you're making a way. Freedom. declaration this morning, that strongholds break in the name of Jesus. Amen. Whatever has been happening this week, whatever you've been through to get here, whatever things have been chaining us up and holding us down, they can be broken in the name of Jesus. And here we come, we gather under His name at a time of Sabbath when we can rest from the things going on in the week. And it is not because of anything good we've done, but because of the goodness of Jesus, because of our good good Father, and how much He loves us, and He's constantly pouring that love out on us. So this morning, let's continue worshiping and celebrate the good, good Father we have in God. Oh, I've heard a thousand 
and stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard the tender whisper of love in the dead of night, and you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone. You're a good, good father. It's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. Thank you for singing with us. You can take a seat. Good morning and happy Sabbath. I'd like to welcome everyone here to church today. Um, you know, every Sabbath is a special day. We get to come and corporately worship God. But some Sabbaths are extra special. God, our God of love and a God of life, and, and today we get to celebrate a bit of that life with a, with a baby dedication. So I hope you feel welcome, and thank you for being here. Good morning, church. Nice to see you all. Everybody well? Who's liking the humidity? No, no. Welcome, Siberia. 
Okay, well, it's really nice to see you all. Just uh, one thing that I need to let you know, that is next week is our church camp. Therefore, the church will be closed, okay? So just keep that in mind if you're not coming to the church camp. I'd like to invite Riley Bartlett. Where's Riley? I know you can't make your way here on your own, so I'll ask for mum and dad to come with you. And Riley's siblings, if they want to join, Noah and Hope. Thank you so much. And they have also asked for spiritual guardians to, uh, to support Riley. So if you're a spiritual guardian, you've been asked to join, please come up the front. Please join us. Yep. Don't be shy. <clears throat> Well, I think that Riley is going to be well looked after spiritually, isn't she? There's no mistake about that. So thank you so much. So I want to read a Bible verse, and then I want to share with you a little story. But I, in the book of Psalms, <clears throat> Psalms 127.3, it says that children are a gift from the Lord. They are a reward from Him. Who believes that? I have three. I believe that. There are times when you might disagree with children, but in general... <laughs> They are a gift and a precious gift, and uh, as I've gotten to know little Riley a little bit, she's so passive, so quiet, but this morning she almost started crying when she saw me. <laughs> I, I want to share a story with you. <clears throat> Last Sabbath, it was about 10 o'clock in the morning, and the phone rang in the office. I answered it, and there was a gentleman on the phone who told me his name was Matthew, and Matthew said to me, I'm at the end of my tether. I don't know what to do. I need to talk to someone. Can you help me? And I said to Matthew, church is starting soon. You can come to church now or you can come when we finish and I'm more than happy to chat with you. I preached last week and as I was at the door, I had a few people say to me, there's a gentleman outside who needs to see you. And as far as I can remember, he had denim jeans on a denim jacket, and he was quite distraught. And I went out, I met him, we went into my office with Dean Scutts, and we sat there. And this man, who was probably in his 50s, broke down and cried and cried in front of me. And he couldn't stop crying. And, he sa and I said, uh, you know, when you're ready, just let me know what's happening in your life, Matthew. And he said, I'm from Cooma, I'm from the country, I've come here for work, I can't find any work, I'm absolutely destitute, I don't have a cent to my name. And he said, I want to go home, I've had enough. And he said, I said, so what can I do to help you? And he says, I don't have any money, I don't have a cent, I need at least $100 to catch a train from the city, from central out west to go home and I can get work there immediately and so on. And I asked him if he had family. He said he had no family anywhere. No parents, no siblings, no nothing. Now you're probably asking or wondering why I'm sharing this story during a baby dedication. Someone that morning had given me $100. $100. That very morning they came to me and they said... I have $100 for you, Pastor, and it's for someone in need. If someone needs it, it's here. And do you know who it was? It was Martin Bartlett. So thank you, Martin and Gurley, for doing that. And, you know, you never know how God works in your life. It's amazing how God works. And I said to Matthew, as he was sitting across me, sharing his story... I said to him, you know, someone today gave me $100 to help someone in need. And I went to my bookshelf, I pulled it out, and I said, this is for you. And he was able to get home, and I said, will this help? And he said, well, um, he said, no, I, I don't have any money for food. And then I thought, with the coffee club, they give me a cup sometimes, and there's money there, and I give it to the treasurer, 
but last week it wasn't handed in and there was about $24 in there. And I said, will this help you with some food? And he says, yes, I'll hang around Central Station until I can book my train and head home, but I'll just go to McDonald's or wherever it is and I'll just get some food. And so this morning I don't have to share with you about being godly parents because I can see that in action. So thank you so much. Yep, I really appreciate what you did. And so what I want to do with you is to challenge you and the guardians here today. So we're going to do a reading and a response, right? So I'm the pastor, they're the parents, and you are the congregation. You ready for this? Okay, let's go to the next slide. Okay, God has entrusted you with a magnificent responsibility. Let's hold it there. I need to get them a microphone. Any more microphones here? Just two. Thank you. Now, Gurley loves to sing, so we have to get a singing soon. Okay. God has entrusted you with a magnificent responsibility. Next slide. We lovingly accept this responsibility. Next. You have a great honour and privilege of training Riley up in the ways of God. We prayerfully accept this responsibility. Congregation? Okay, let's try it again. Go back to congregation. Congregation? We will help you. Next one. God has given you the gift of life. We will protect and nurture this gift. We will help you. Please stay with us. Right. God expects you to teach Riley through the example of a godly life. We will strive to live lives consistent with God's word before Riley. We will provide godly examples for Riley as well. A child is like a clean slate. It knows no right or wrong. We dedicate, we dedicate ourselves, ourselves to the, to the teaching of the, the ways of Christ, of Christ to Riley. Okay. Will you strive for purity? And I think this now is for the spiritual guardian, so you need to speak nice and loud. Let's pass the microphones over here. Yep, okay. You ready? Will you strive for purity in every aspect of your lives and prioritise integrity in your relationship with Riley? Spiritual guardians? We, we undertake our responsibility, responsibility and, and will we'll take, take it seriously. seriously. <laughs> okay, you're a bit slow today. Uh, Will you commit to praying for the physical, mental, social and spiritual welfare of Riley? We, we value, value our, our responsibility, responsibility as spiritual, spiritual guardians and, and will support, support Riley. Riley. We will Everyone, praise, praise God, God from all whom all blessings flow. So thank you for committing to supporting Riley and her parents. Thank you, spiritual guardians, for doing that also. So let's have a time of prayer now. Let's ask for God's blessing over Riley and mum and dad. And I'll just come behind you here. Let's pray. I invite you to bow your heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, we are so blessed at Castle Hill to have so many children, so many babies. Lord, I've been asking for years, and I thank you for answering our prayers Today, I want to present Riley to you as a beautiful baby who will one day grow up to serve you and honour you with her life. And I pray for her parents. I ask that you bless them abundantly. Allow them to be godly people in every aspect of their lives. May they choose to worship you and honour you and serve you with all that you've given them. Lord, I also... Pray for Noah and Hope, who are Riley's siblings. May you bless them to be good examples for her, to be always willing to look after her and to also provide for her. Lord, I thank you for the spiritual guardians that are here, godly people. May they always look out for Riley. May they be praying for her and supporting her through her journey through life. And may we as a congregation... 
support Martin and Gurley and Riley and the kids. May we as a congregation love, accept them and always be willing to also be spiritual guardians, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, we do have a gift for you. So, thank you so much, Danielle. have a luncheon downstairs so you're all welcome to stay. For this child I have prayed and you heard my cry for this baby I had faith and you gave new life in this moment now vow to you this day I dedicate this baby back to you and I dedicate myself to train and love her trust with this precious gift with your power by your love my all I commit on this straight and purposes I say that I
All right, good morning, church. It's nice to see you all here this morning. Um, our first little thing that we're going to do, it's a big day today, we have lots of exciting things happening, is as you can see, we have our Christmas child boxes up the front, and I believe there are a few more loitering around the back that some kids are going to bring up for us now. So while they do that and build our big wall of boxes, we're going to pray over these and for the children that they're going to go to so that uh, the children get to celebrate and be blessed by the gifts that are in here for their Christmas presents. Oh, thanks, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you to everyone who packed a box or a few. This is always one of my most exciting things that we do as a church. I've always loved the idea of these boxes that go to a child that we'll never meet, but we get to bless them with joy. Oh, thank you. Awesome. Let's all bow our heads together and pray over these boxes. Heavenly Father, thank you for the generosity of our church family. Um, we pray that as they fly overseas uh, to the children that they're going to go to, that when they open up the boxes that uh, have been so lovingly packed, that they feel joy and love um, through you, through these boxes that are here. Thank you that we can bless others in a way, just a little way like this, and I pray that um, you continually remind us to be generous in the way that we love and share your love with others. I pray for the families that these go to, uh, that you just bless them and bring them joy in their lives. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Um, just a few other announcements that were passed on to me. Um, <laughs> uh, adventure Camp. Woo! Adventure Camp. We saw our littlest adventurer up there getting ready for Adventure Camp, obviously, um, which is the 11th to the 13th of November. So um, get excited. What a, what a great time. Adventure Camp, looking forward. Um, do they come and see you, Chris, if they need any more information about that or... It's on the bulletin as well. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, day camp registration. Two-day camp? Is there now a two-day? We two might day? need to clarify. Yeah, that. sorry. I just <laughs> <need> to... <laughs> sorry. Is it just coming down for the in individual days would be yes. my guess. But church camp is coming up. We're very excited. Yes. Um, so you must register if you want to come to camp, if you even just for a day visitor, um, you know, because Crossans really know, like to know who's, who's on site. So... Um, if you're coming down to, for the day on, on Sabbath, um, please register because um, so, we'd love to have as many, many of us there as we can because it's going to be an awesome time as a church. There won't be a church service here in this building that day. We're only doing church camp. Um, so we'd love to have as many of us out there as we can get. Um, so the registrations close on the 24th of November. Okay. so That's not right. Sorry. October. <laughs> October. <laughs> It'll be long done by then. <laughs> yes. Ignore November. This is 24th, so 24th of this month, so it's like two days away. Um, so anyway, thank you, Carolyn. Appreciate that. You're on to it. Um, awesome. So yeah, we're really excited about church camp. We've got some great things planned. There's going to be baptisms, music, food. I've uh, got the Agape Feast on Friday night. I'm really looking forward to this, this whole thing. Um, it's my first church camp with you guys, so it's going to be great. Um, anyway... Last announcement from me is that we are now going to take the offering, which goes to um, local church outreach budget. Um, you know, there are so many, there's so much need, even right here in the hills at Castle Hill, um, so many people that need to meet Jesus. And so um, this is an opportunity to um, invest into that. And so um, just as the bag's going around now, just love to pray for this offering. Um, Lord Jesus, we just thank you so much for um, this opportunity to give. And Lord, we pray that you bless this offering so that it can reach our community and that they can know you, Jesus, and we can be the most loving church. We pray this in your holy name. Amen. Thank you, church.
Hey, let's continue our worship this morning. So if you would um, stand to your feet. What a, what a great reminder after this, um, after a baby de- dedication and the family, you know, standing around the spiritual guardians. Um, it's a beautiful thing in our church, but even on a, on a larger scale, it's kind of like we're all, um, we're all children of God, you know, and sometimes we need that reminder of who we are, that we have a spiritual family around us and we have a, um, we have a place in His kingdom, which is so exciting. So let's, let's sing and celebrate that this morning. continue singing um, a familiar song Jesus paid it all it might sound a little bit different but um, the theology of this song is incredible and what a reminder every week to come back and think of this this message again that Jesus paid it all for us each and every one of us whether this is your first time here or whether you're been here from before it was built I don't know <laughs> um, 
This is something that every, every week I, I come to church and I just get excited about being reminded again of who Jesus is and what he's done in my life for me. And, um, you know, even though some weeks are really high and amazing weeks, but then other weeks are lower weeks, every week I just want to come back to, to that thing that levels all of us, the fact that all of us here, with, we were thought of on that cross, right? So let's take a moment to, to sing this and, um, and celebrate what Jesus has done in our lives. I hear the Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray, finding me thine all in all. Lord, now indeed I find thy Please bow your heads for prayer.
Dear Jesus, thank you for the day you have given us today. Thank you for giving me my baby sister, Riley. I pray that you keep her safe and let her know who you are and guide her in her life. Thank you for blessing our family with a beautiful baby. Amen. Dear Lord, thank you that I've been blessed with a baby sister. I love having her around. Please keep her safe as she grows up and may she always know how much I love her. Please bless Kelvin as he speaks to us today and please help us learn from him today. Amen. Good morning, everyone. I'll just, uh, I'll just uh, grab this. Yeah, I'll, I'll grab it. Thanks. Oh, do you want the big one? Oh, it's fine. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, good morning everyone, it's great to see you all. It's uh, so good to see some sunshine, isn't it? And to see everyone here today. And um, yeah, I'd like to welcome you all. I'd like to thank Vanessa for your beautiful song and, and Hope and, and Noah for your prayer and to the music team, thank you very much. So today I'd like to uh, yeah, speak to you um, in my professional life nine to five each week, I need to work with intricate detail, writing reports, designing electrical systems, and sometimes it seems like my designs never end. They are commented on over and over and over and over and over again, sometimes for weeks and months and even years, stretching into years by various checkers, Approvers, independent certifiers, governing bodies, clients, competitors, all having their slice of the pie, having their views and their opinions, stating their interpretations of their codes and standards, and me trying to get this thing approved. That's just an example of, that's just an extract of, of one of my documents that I wrote for a a tower in the city that's now halfway into the sky. It's about 10 stories above the ground. And that's a strategy document for protecting the structural steelwork from, from electrolysis corrosion. Because if one, one amp goes where it shouldn't be continuously for one year, it can chew up 10 kilograms of steel out of that building. So as you can see, there's barely a word that's original. <laughs> every every colour in every colour in the colour scheme has been used in comments. And if I turn track changes on, yeah, you'd see many, many different reviews. It's actually been approved by everybody except one reviewer. So I, I try and hide from him each week <laughs> because I've given up. So I won't tell you what building it is in case you don't want to visit it. <laughs> so, so here, here is an earthing system for that same building and that's just one, one part of the design. But as you can see, it's, it's really intricate detail and, and I get bogged down in detail and it wears me out and it can be like that in life, can't it? We can get worn out by the details of our life, by the little things. And, and so too with our spiritual lives, we can think about things that are not important the things that don't really matter, you know, things that don't really matter, they can bog us down. So today, I want to get as far away from my workplace and the daily grind of my profession as possible. Today, I, I want to present a simple game plan. I want to grasp the big picture, the biggest of the big pictures, how we are all here and the gift of our eternal destiny where are we all going? I don't want to discuss any fine details today. I just want us to see the whole purpose of our lives and our futures in the biggest possible way. 
whoops. In the book of Psalms, it says, For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. As you can see, David knew what God had done. Each of us here today has been created specially by our creator himself. Our creator God is an artist. All of us are especially handcrafted. He crafted us like we used to do in school art when we used to make those pots out of clay. Our bodies, everyone's special personality is here today. God has made you as his own. He created all of you to live forever. But sadly, sin has entered our world and, and thrown a spanner into God's divine plan for us. We have all fallen and we've all sinned. So God sent his son Jesus to die for us, to give us back our eternal destiny. In this famous verse, he says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. That's what a promise that is. He forgave all our sins. He cancelled the record of the charges against us. So my driving record would be a good one to cancel, <laughs> as would by my university record. That would be good to cancel too. And he took it all away by nailing it to the cross. Christmas is one of my favourite times. It's, it's such a happy time for me. Christmas Day is a day that seems to go on forever. I get together with family. I get to chat, eat beautiful food. I can relax. Boxing Day is the next day, so I don't have to go to work. There's no time pressures. And I love the happy faces of, of my children and, and family receiving their gifts. It's awesome. And Paul tells us in Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So our eternal destiny is a gift. We simply have to believe in Jesus and his sacrifice that he made for us on the cross to accept this free gift of eternal life and to allow Jesus to lead in our lives. And we know that Jesus existed. We can you know, take a holiday to the Middle East, can't we? And we can take tours of where Jesus walked, where he preached. We can visit the hill of Golgotha where he died. We can tour there. The Bible isn't just a book of ethics or stories or, or rules and guidelines. It's a perfectly accurate history book and every fact that's in there can be verified. So we know this offer is real. Jesus died for us as his gift to us of eternal life. None of us can remember anything from before we were born. I only know about the 1950s from picture books, from stories, from records that I read about. I simply didn't exist in the 1950s. But when God carefully crafted me into, the, into existence in January of 1966, a few years after that, my life and my memories become real. My very first memory is of a thunderstorm. I was standing in our milking sheds and this massive storm came over. And, and that's my very first memory of life. My, my other memory is of my brother. I, I love my brother, he, he's a fair bit older than me and I idolised him and I used to run around the farm pretending I was him and he was a cool teenager who never wore a shirt because it was cool to get as brown as you could and so we were forever peeling. I think you know, we'd, we'd peel and recover and peel and recover and I used to pretend I was Neville and his favourite pastime was to tease me and he, he used to love handling snakes. He would get them by the tail and lift them up and grab them by the head and 
he, he once took a snake to school and brought it out in his maths class. <laughs> and I think he's the only person to have the distinction at Kempsey High School of being caned every day of the school year. <laughs> but for my brother, he probably wasn't there many days, so it, it, it could have been about you know, a couple of dozen days that he was caned. And so he, he was forever killing snakes and leaving them in my path, and I'd jump out of the way and get scared, and I think my heart, if I live a long life, I'll be lucky. But I'll never forget getting him back. It was one of my favourite memories. We, we built a seesaw, and my brother never had his shirt on, and behind the seesaw was a crop of stinging nettles. And so he was standing on the end, and he was just laughing at me and teasing me and calling me names. So I got a big axe, and I went whack, and it launched him off <laughs> into the stinging nettles. And so my mother had to pick them out of him for the next hour. So my life began with those memories. But before that, I didn't know anything. I just didn't exist. And if Jesus doesn't return in my lifetime, I will one day fall asleep, just like everybody else ever has that's been created, and I'll then know nothing. My memories will be gone once more. Solomon tells us this in Ecclesiastes 9, 5 to 6. For the living know that they will die, but the dead know nothing, and they have no more reward, for the memory of them is forgotten. Their love and their hate and their envy have already perished, and forever they have no more share in all that is done under the sun. But if I have believed in Jesus and accept his gift of the cross, I get to be called by Jesus and remade perfectly when he returns to have my eternal destiny. I can't imagine not accepting my family's generosity at Christmas. Saying to my, yeah, to Auntie Carolyn, I don't like your t-shirt, I don't want it, you have it back. Saying to Nana Bertelson, the book she gave me last Christmas, I don't need to read that, I don't like it. Saying to Matt, here, have your eels kept back, we didn't win the grand final, mm, don't want that. I can't imagine not accepting my Christmas gifts. And I can't imagine not accepting my personal gift of eternity from Jesus. You see, acceptance of this gift is a choice. It isn't forced. God created us all with a free will to choose. And sadly, many choose to leave this gift at the base of God's Christmas tree unopened. And God's Christmas tree is the cross. I've never forgotten the words of Carl King, a close friend of many of us here today, who just before he passed away, told his teenage sons that his wish for them was to accept Jesus and to keep him in their lives as they grew. And that in comparison to this, nothing else matters. In the big picture, at the end of the day, when all is said and done, nothing else will matter except our having accepted this free gift. It doesn't matter what we've done, what we've achieved, how wealthy we've been, how successful we've been, it will all come down to this. And what is the alternative? What is our alternative? The alternative is to simply pass up on this offer, to say, no, I don't want this, and cease to exist, just like it was before each of us were born. So the choice is ours. The famous agnostic David Attenborough has seemingly made his choice. He has been quoted as saying that when he dies, I'm simply going to wither away into nothingness. That isn't my choice. I choose life over death, eternal bliss over nothingness. In 1 Corinthians 2 verse 9, we are told, I has not seen nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. So our future is beyond our imagination. We can't write about it, we can't even imagine it. I want to experience this. Think of the most amazing things for a minute that we love doing. 
each of us loves to do certain things. I love Christmas lunches. I look forward to it for months in advance. I love to get back to my family farm just to get away and go to the beach and go out to dinner at Crescent Head. I love to have holidays with my family. I like the excitement each year of watching the NRL Grand Final. I look forward to it in advance, despite the Parramatta Eels losing nearly every one they play in. But nothing we can think of or imagine can come close to what our future will hold. This is our choice. We can choose this or this. We can choose this or this. We can choose this or that. We can choose an eternal life living like this or we can accept this. We can have beautiful meals forever or take the risk of what the world offers. We can have eternal youth or we can grow old and eventually have nothing. This is our choice and it all comes down to just accepting this gift. But God doesn't want us just to hang out for heaven, does he? He doesn't want us just to look forward to our eternal future, but he wants us to experience real life each day as well. He wants us in our daily lives to experience heaven. Christians are meant to be the happiest, most contented people who radiate warmth and happiness to those around them. You can't not tell a smoker, can you, a heavy smoker from their breath, from their teeth. They're always going outside at work. You can't help but notice them. And you can't help but notice a happy Christian, how happy we are. The big picture is that we know where we're going and we know how to make the most of every day in our lives. The big picture is that we bring a slice of heaven to our lives each day. David says in Psalms 28, seven, my heart leaps for joy. Joy is like a muscle. It's like going to the gym. The more you develop it, the stronger it becomes. So today I'd like to show you the five best exercises that we can choose to develop our inner joy, to develop our lives to be the happiest that they can be here on earth. Firstly, be content. In 1 Timothy 6, 6 to 7, Paul tells us that godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into the world and we can take nothing out of it. It is sad that many people mistakenly believe that money will bring them lasting happiness. However, many who have taken this path will soon realise that they are on the wrong road to happiness. A wealthy person who is generous can empower, enrich and make a difference to so many lives. The total opposite of a wealthy person who snorts his wealth up his nose or drinks it or gambles it or just spurges it all on toys all for himself. The key to happiness is not money but contentment. Godly contentment means that we have put our trust and confidence in God that he will provide our needs. It is the confidence that after we have done our best, God will do the rest. Human nature will never be satisfied. When we finally have all that we want, we will again look for other things. This is a thief of joy. However, if we are content with our life, we will soon find ourselves at peace, blessed and joyful. Secondly, don't compare yourself to others. Another thief of joy is comparing ourselves to others. When we look at others, it is so easy to find the things that we lack instead of seeing the things that we have. In reality, we can never ever win the compare game. If we consider ourselves to superior to others, we'll become arrogant. On the other hand, if we find things in others that we don't have, we'll feel insecure and inferior. God doesn't determ determine our value through the life of others. He doesn't use other people to measure up our character. 
So why do we have to compare ourselves to others? Each of us are a work of art by God himself. We're unique. We have our advantages, our disadvantages, but we all experience life in a different way. So comparing ourselves to others is not wise. Instead of comparing ourselves to others, why not compare ourselves to ourselves? Compete with ourselves. Be a better person ourselves each day. Thirdly, be generous. Acts 20.35 says, it is more blessed to give than to receive. If you want to be truly happy, find a way to serve other people. Strive to make other people happy and you will see happiness will be like a boomerang. It will come back to us. This is the main reason that Jesus said it is more blessed to give than to receive. And we can be generous in so many other ways than just our money. Quite often, generosity of our time is exactly what people need. Look for ways to give. God never intended for there to be any poverty or hunger. In Old Testament times, the farmers were explicitly instructed to leave some of their produce for those who needed it. In Leviticus 23:22, they were instructed, when you reap the harvest of your land, do not reap to the very edges of your field or gather the gleanings of your harvest. Leave them for the poor and for the foreigner residing among you. I am the Lord your God. The Bible says in Acts 20, 35, it is more blessed to give than to receive. And in 2 Corinthians 9, 7, it says God loves a cheerful giver. The reason is that because when we give, we become more like God. And he doesn't give grudgingly. Did you know that our giving actually determines how much we receive? So if we actually don't give, we're missing out. Because in Malachi 3.10, God says, test me in this, says the Lord God Almighty, and see if I will not open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. We can't outgive God. And he's actually saying, test me. So if we don't give, then we're not going to get what we, what we can. And this is the only verse in the Bible where God actually challenges us to test him. He wants to show that he will keep his promises. In rugby league terms, God is saying to us, come on, run at me, run hard at me, test me. I'll show you. As the old farmer said, I shovel it into God's storehouse and he shovels it back into mine. But God has a bigger shovel. Fourthly, Honour your father and mother. In, in Ephesians 6, 1 to 3, we're told, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honour your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, so that it may go well with you and you may enjoy long life on the earth. This is actually the first commandment with a promise. We are promised longer life, a more fulfilled life, if we love our parents. For some who have difficult home lives and different, difficult circumstances, this may be hard. We may not like or agree with our parents, but we can still love them because none of us would be here today without them. Today, we can see more and more children disrespecting their parents, which is one of the reasons we are living in such a sad world. It is because this commandment is being broken. Our parents have lived longer than any of us have. They have experienced the different twists and turns of life. And they have the wisdom to impart to us. And if we listen to their sound advice, we'll make better choices. Having a good relationship with our parents and our families is a precursor for such a happy life. Of course, there are instances that our parents are difficult to honour. We need to pray for them and ask for God's help. We must remember that our attitude should not depend on their attitude. If they are filled with hate, then we must be filled with love. We might hate their actions and what they do, but we shouldn't despise them. Stay respectful, knowing that our ultimate Father in heaven is God. And finally, our final exercise is to keep the law of God. In 1 John 5, 3, 
It says, in fact, this is love for God, to keep his commands. And his commands are not burdensome. This world has become dominantly a sad, depressed place because of sin. Sin can be the greatest thief of happiness. Therefore, if we want to be happy, try and avoid sin at all costs. But what is sin? Sin is the transgression of the law, it says in 1 John 3, 4. God's love is so great that he gave us guidelines on how to fully live our lives. And these guidelines are laid out for us. So many people want to be happy, but are not willing to do what it takes to be happy. Many see these commands as a burden. We may see the commandments as a burden, but they're given to us for our benefit and protection. The little boy might think of his dad as a bit of an ogre for saying, if you go out that front door and ride your bike out onto the street, you'll get a smack. But his dad can cop being thought of as an ogre because in the bigger picture, he just wants his, to protect his little boy from being run over. And that's the same with God. He knows that we're so much happier and fulfilled if we make him the centre of our lives if we take a day out of our week to just relax and chill out, to come to church, to go out into nature, to do things we don't normally do through the week. If we love our parents, if we don't lie or gossip, if we stay loyal to our husbands and wives, if we don't steal, if we do these things, we're gonna be so much happier. By following these guidelines, we show our love for God and we show our love for others. And when we love others, we start to love ourselves as well. And that's what it's all about, to love ourselves and to become happier people, to have a slice of heaven on earth. So if we do follow his guidelines, our life will become so much blessed. So I invite the band to, to pop up now. And in my final words, it is my prayer today that we all have a greater sense of how important we are of how loved we are, of how special we are, of where we're heading, and how we can live each day leading fulfilled, happy lives. It is my prayer today that Jesus is front and centre of our big picture. great message thank you thank you Kelvin um, well let's just let's just close out today with some another song to celebrate that that big picture that our hearts are clean because of Jesus so let's stand to our feet and sing
blessing on the food as well. Dear Lord, we, we thank you for this great day. We thank you that we are all special, that we're all created by your hand, our personalities, our bodies, everything about us is special. And thank you that you've redeemed us and given us a free gift that all we have to do is to accept this. And I pray that we'll all accept it today. And I, I pray for the, for the food and for the hands that prepared it. And I pray that you'll You'll bless each one of us today in your name. Amen. <laughs>